Jay. I'm going to be talking to you about jazz guitar playing. Now there's a lot of instructional video on YouTube about how to play jazz guitar, but I'm going to focus on some things that I haven't heard a lot of, um, and they all are around the same subject of how to play with other people. Now unlike other genres in jazz, it's essential, it's an essential tenet of the music that you improvise and you communicate and group, improvise in groups uh, with other musicians. So unlike most other forms of music, especially classical music and rock, there is a need to learn how to communicate with other musicians live while improvising. So even if you're not a great jazz guitarist yet or anywhere near the level you want to be, you should start you should nonetheless start playing with lots of people, as many different people as you can, because it's an essential part of being a jazz musician. Now, you can play solo jazz guitar, that is jazz guitar solos, arrangements for solo guitar, um, and work on your soloing, but uh, most of that is just going to be used for templates and to give you devices to use in the real work of being a jazz guitarist, which is small groups, duets, trios, quartets, um, small groups com and combos. Because realistically, there isn't a lot of work, performance work, for solo jazz guitar. Uh, the, the solo jazz guitar gigs you're going to get are background music at parties for the most part. Uh, the only people who give concerts for solo jazz guitar are the elite greats uh, who are specialized in solo guitar like Joe Pass and those kinds of guys. It's a niche instrument. Um, it's not like solo piano or solo uh, some other instruments where people go to see this all the time. So. What you can think of as solo gu guitar playing, solo arrangements, is a way to study the guitar, learn uh, the shapes of, of the keys and uh, where all the notes are, and, and have a lot of ammunition for things, for uh, small group work. I'll give you an example. Say I'm playing um, uh, Body and Soul. For solo jazz guitar, I would play something like this. stops. Uh, he's taking a breath. That's a good time to insert 
some chords into the space he leaves. So then you can play part of your your solo. Let's say he's going and he stops and you go so you can fill in the spaces but just picking and choosing uh, from your jazz solo I mean your, your solo arrangement um, but that, that I started I alluded to it already that brings us to the basic rules of playing in a jazz situation with other people. Uh, rule number one, um, stay out of the soloist's way. The soloist is playing way up here. Uh, like Don't play chords up there too. Don't go beyond. but he's going to cover him up and he's going to be pissed off. Play stop down here. So he, he has uh, his own range all by himself and the audience will hear him. Um, rule number two is you want to uh, show the, the uh, other musicians that you're listening to them. The thing that makes it fun for them is to be supported by you and show that you're listening, that, that at least somebody's listening to them. Um, it makes them feel good. It's part of communicating. And then once you play something that so shows you're listening, they, it's like a game, and they may throw something else out there to see if you're listening. Now, your ear may not be so great. You may be just barely getting through the chords, through the choruses, and trying not to get lost, and trying not to turn the beat around. So you may not be able to pick out all the notes that the soloist is doing. But one thing you can do is you can support him by copying the rhythm he's doing. So let's say the trumpet player is up here, and he's going... Then when you come to the next chord, you could, if he takes a break there, you go like this. Dun, 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 uh. Something like that. And then he'll go, hey, and then it builds on, on the melody, on the theme. Uh, and it shows you're listening. Now for the advanced players, what you're going to do is uh, you're going to copy his top note. Like if he's playing like that. You may want to play chords like this. Right? Uh, when you get good, you'll worry about doing that. Rule number three is um, as the chord player in the group, uh, and hopefully you're the only one because piano playing with another piano player um, is very tricky. And, in fact, I I swore it off. I stopped doing it because we kept stepping on each other's toes, and it limited me too much. I don't. I stopped playing with piano players. So if you're the only chord player, you're responsible for the texture and a lot of the emotion in the band. And if the guitar, if the soloist is playing a, a solo and he's really driving at something, uh, you can do a lot to help him build the solo, uh, and you do that through textures. 